So, my name is Apostolos. I'm a co-founder of Free and Real. Free and Real is an acronym. It means freedom of resources for everyone everywhere, respect, equality, awareness and learning. It was established in Athens in the beginning of 2009 with a group of people that all met online in an internet forum. We had grand plans and ideas about total world redesigning. We realized that we have to start small and with actual practical examples if we wanted to reach more people. So we decided to leave Athens to create a school of sustainability and self-efficiency. And we wanted to make a model that anyone can copy anywhere in the world to be open source available. For the last seven years, we do many different workshops, seminars, festivals, all around the subject of sustainability and self-efficiency. We came here, I had zero knowledge about anything. Like I was a website designer. We started from knowing nothing, creating amazing three-level structures. Hey. I'm Anastasia, we've been four years and part of the project and uh, here is the test site. Uh, it's a place where we test different kinds of construction, where we pass most of our time testing different applications. The system is all uh, self-sufficient and let's take a look around. This we call the mega yurt. We started this construction one year ago. The process was kind of fast, we had a lot of work and a lot of people. This we needed because we didn't really have a workshop and we didn't really have a place to do presentations or to be warm in the winter except of the sleeping areas that we have so it's a very nice uh, common space okay it's like a sitting table we also eat here so it's like a multi-function space for us and we are planning to close the walls around for stability reasons with cob welcome to the mega yurt there is no cement uh, anywhere in this uh, pole foundation we use only technique with stone and stamping, so we dig uh, 40 cm, 50 cm, depending on the height that we want to go. And after we use the technique with a stamper, we put stones around and we really compress them. Uh, the walls inside, it's only straw without clay, which we figured out it will be a good solution in terms of uh, weight. And on the floor again, there is straw insulation. The best part about this yurt is uh, this which is a rocket mass heater and in the winter is perfect. It consumes like a minimum amount of food and it really uses the maximum capacity of uh, the heat that it can. You to also cob, which is a big thermal mass and absorb like a lot of heat. So we feed the stove uh, from here and uh, the smoke travels through the barrel and, and after travels through the bench here and it goes outside and uh, here on the bench there's like only uh, 10 to 15 centimeters that means that like, if you burn wood for one hour this uh, gets warm so people like really like laying on this and it's very nice too. and here's where we do the presentations also and the uh, talks during workshops or we watch movies and uh, up there there's like a small uh, observatory which you can see the sea from up there. So that's pretty much all for the magazine. Here is a small workout space. And now we have the chance to have a ping pong also. And this is the pod. It's just a simple structure, just for, it just have a bed. Here we have a small garden. Uh, we have uh, the seasonal things usually. Uh, it's not huge, but we plant as much as space we have. This is just our old washing machine, it was not working anymore and uh, we converted it into uh, pedal powered. You can see the connections in the back also and fit. We compost our food, we upcycle a lot. There's a good example here. This is a solar air heater which is incorporated into a cob wall uh, which uh, the technique here is Satma, it's called, which is wave bamboo inside and you just stuck the cob around. So the solar air heater is made out of beer cans and they are painted black and cut at the bottom and at the top. So the air goes inside, circulate, and there is an output in the end and you can connect it to a small ventilator with a panel in the winter. So it actually doesn't, it's not like a heater, but it preheats space in the winter. So it breaks up the humidity and this works during the day with the sunlight which we don't really need right now because the space is open. But in the future, we made it and we're like, okay, we can put it in the wall. 
Uh, this is uh, a cob kitchen and uh, that on the top there is a wooden house. This is the hexa yurt. Uh, we call it hexa yurt just because it has six sides. It's the place where we mostly sleep. Here the crew, the people that live longer here. And for sure it's the place where we sleep in the winter because it has a very good insulation and there is a small stove which uh, doesn't leave a lot of food so we are very warm in here in the winter. Okay, in the walls is OSB and the insulation here is pre it's pretty interesting. We found this material which is made out of up, uh, upcycled bottles. So they really break down the bottle and they make like a, a pillow like this and uh, we use it uh, in this structure. We like to experiment with different materials and to test them. And there's a small attic up there. And uh, this kitchen came after the down part. So the whole thing was really on some just some central poles. Here we have also a rocket stove. This gets very warm. You don't get to really cook on it, but you can warm up the water for teas and stuff like this. And same here, you feed it here and it travels again through the bench. It's where we have our coffees. It's where we spend also time in the winter when it's cold because it's a small, smaller place uh, to heat up than the mega yurt. And here we usually have fruits and uh, some vegetables from the garden. Most of the teas we collect on the mountain. This is the cuckoo yurt. The initial idea of this yurt, it was to be a model for a, a four people family. Of course, we didn't use it uh, for a family house because then we use it for hosting people in the workshops and so on. And this here is the first yurt. So you can just clearly see, it's been like eight years that it's here. Slowly, slowly they start decomposing, like slowly and inside the woods and everything. So now we use it only for storage. Here is our toilet, it's a dry compost toilet. It's very simple, it's just a big compost bin under uh, where we emptied it um, kind of one time per year or two times per year if it's needed and we store it so we can use it later uh, in the garden. Only, okay, it's not nothing because you have to move it so you shovel it up, so okay, it's not the best day of the year, but uh, okay, it's just one day. And this one is the Mystic Yurt, which is clearly for sleeping, as you can see, which is pretty good insulated also. The Hexa Yurt and the Mystic Yurt are the best for the winter. And here we have an outdoor shower, very simple in the summer, it's very pleasant to have some fresh water here outside. We are just planning now to make a new shower. This one is a storage and it's also where we uh, where we put our batteries. And here there are babies. I didn't know they were here. It's a new cat family. So this land is 12,000 square meters. Uh, go to our possession around seven and a half years ago. So when we got it, it was totally barren. It was nothing. And doing natural farming with seed bombs. What you see now, we are trying to create a food forest. Half of them survived during the summer. The ones that survived have adapted. This is exactly the center of the land where we are now. And it's the central geodesic dome. But through the years and with the harsh sun of the Greece and especially the very harsh uh, south winds we have during the winter, we always had a problem with the canvas. So we made the decision to convert it into a straw bale house. So here the idea is to create water re reservoir, but we want to make it into as close as possible to a natural lake. The next step is to add a special uh, coating material and then start collecting water in the winter and also getting some from the spring that we have close by and add, start adding uh, special plants, fish, they can create a microclimate and basically change the microclimate around. If you live in a city, there are many things you can do that you can make big changes if a lot of people do them. For example, uh, a very easy thing I always mention is what you shop and what you eat. This is things you actually vote every day. This is the simplest thing that anyone can do in their daily lives, no matter where they live.